This is D Brown, the begotten son, and you have just entered the begotten experience. <gasps> The hoodie you wearing, man? What's 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 going on with the hoodie? <laughs> let's just go there, man. All right, so yeah, just to I guess get a ongoing thing. Hoodie, new apparel, new apparel right here. Rocking with the with the new the new logo for Begotten Sounds. You know, um, I was just really point out like with this with the hoodie, it was kind of like the new apparel, new or new logo type thing. And for me, with this logo. When I made it, I really wanted something to be abstract. Right. I was looking for something that had um, like staying power, and then also after this started to come along, because I wanted like an abstract B. It's kind of hard to see with it. That's why it's abstract though. But it's kind of hard to see with it. But at the same time, I wanted to represent music. I wanted to represent energy, and. Like music and energy, really, and with those two, it's kind of like there's no real, uh, which would you say? Like, uh, there's no real drawing for like when you say energy, what do you draw? What do you see? Like, that's all subjective to somebody's right. mind. That's true. So with this, it was kind of like, all right, I want to represent the abstract B, then I want to represent music and energy. So therefore, you get the 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 strong structure of a triangle but then on the edges is rounded to get that softer feel to it to give you that for me that music and energy because energy just flows in such a way right. where it's strong but at the same time it don't take on any type of concrete form so it's soft in that matter it, it, yeah okay so that's why i came up with that and then from there i just after this came came along with the logo that's when it just moved it just translated everything to um the way I even wrote Begotten Sounds for the full full on logo where <clears throat> I wanted everything at that point to look strong but not like overbearingly strong. I wanted it to look right. cinematic but at the same time luxurious. So that actually led me to something else after I did that where it was like, okay, well what does a a, a music company feel running as if it was a luxury brand? a like a fashion luxury brand so that's taking me now on to different studies of different high-end fashion brands and seeing what they do and seeing how can i actually transmute what they do on their side it's over back over here with us for begotten sounds and right now of course the most literal is the the apparel right because i don't like to call it merch because a lot of a lot of um a lot of bands and a lot of artists like to call their stuff merch, you know. And it's just, I got a feeling about merch, but I want you to okay. say what you to say about it. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's like they 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 got a they they call their stuff merch, and when you look at it, it looks and feels like merch, where it's just just like okay, I wear this, I buy this at your concert, and I rock it, and then after that concert, I'm probably just wearing it while I'm cutting the grass or something. Right. So I didn't want it as merch. I wanted to make something like a pearl where you feel good rocking it. So I was like, let me strip away the website names and mm -hmm. let me strip away certain things like that. This one is more tailored to rocking Begotten Sounds as that music brand. As opposed to I'm a spokesman for it. Right. Kind of I, yeah. I wanted it to be, especially with the logo, especially when the logo's by itself, is it's really like, okay, that's cool. If you don't know what it is, I want people to still be like, "Yo, that's dope. What is that? I want to rock it. Is that right. the new? That, is that the new drip? I'm on it, type thing." So that's when that just taken from luxury brands and seeing what they do, and how some of them, not all of them, but how some of them would take, would um, take their logo and put it on the, the pearl a certain way, put it on the clothing a, a certain way. It's, it just looks cool and you just want to rock it just for the sake of it looking cool looking cool right mm -hmm. well um and that makes me uh think about something if, if you're approaching it as like luxury apparel um because i think symbolism is deep even when people don't understand it mm -hmm. it's just something about it if there's a story behind the symbol it's attractive mm -hmm. um so in doing that i understand like the uh luxury apparel 
in doing that, you're going to need more stuff. I mean, you're going to have to expand more, have like more shirts, more different designs, you mm -hmm. know, things of that nature. Um, and this was something I was randomly thinking about. Like, we need more platforms of people rocking people's stuff and promoting people's stuff and things mm -hmm. of that nature. You know, so the reason this popped in my head as you were talking was like, um, I eventually want to get to a point where it's like, oh, yeah, I know the person that made this shirt. Well, I actually do know the company that made this shirt. Mm -hmm. But I want it to always be a case of, and that's Y2K Creations, um, for all your custom. But um, I want it to be to a point where I can say, all right, they say, what you got on? It's right here at the Begotten Store. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, what's What you wearing today, it's right here and where we can build up the things. Um, I was listening somewhere and I can't remember where I got it from, so I can't throw the credit to mm -hmm. any which way, but um, they said that the economy is uh, messed up because we're a race in the middle class. Mm -hmm. And part of like what can pull you from one end of the spectrum to the other is entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And if we get more entrepreneurs that's up and ready to go mm -hmm. and that's out there and we get behind them and we support them, then we'll all already raise the equity, raise the stakes for like everybody in the lower class to kind of balance out this huge wealth gap mm -hmm. that we have that's causing so many issues in America. So in a weird twisted way, just how my mind jumps and goes from here to there, mm -hmm. listening to you and I'm saying that like, okay, that's the design that I would wear just because I like the design. Mm -hmm. Let's say I don't know who you are. I don't even like rap music, but mm -hmm. it's it's a cool design to just see somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went into like all of the logos and things of that nature that I just recognize. You know, I see a check, I know what that is. Mm -hmm. I think about all of that. And then I was like, well, why don't we really have like that many of our um, iconic logos mm -hmm. supported to that level. And in doing that, we could shrink the wealth gap and bring back the middle class and possibly save the economy. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. that's just my far out take. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so so you're saying basically like, um, <clears throat> like just being able to build something or entrepreneurial wise, somebody build something and then community wise get behind that Right. And feel that going, and then it just comes like a reciprocal type thing. One person or that company wins who's grass, who's from the grassroots and then gives back to the grassroots and build up in the community, and the community keep on supporting. Right. And somebody else from that community comes up and do the same thing. Kind of basically like flipping money within the community. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if the hoodie is... A hundred dollars, you know, and it's not that bad. No. Not that price ain't that no. bad. We're just doing this for round number uh, right. reasonings. Right. If the hoodie is a hundred dollars and three hundred people, just three hundred, mm -hmm. buys it, just that one thing, that one hoodie, that automatically changes where you are. Mm -hmm. That could be done in a click. Mm -hmm. Three hundred people, boom. And we already know everybody is doing this all day anyway. Mm -hmm. That fast, your life can change, and you can step away from whatever else you're doing and build more on it. And then the more you build, the more employees you'll need, things of that nature. Yeah. So even in looking at this as your brand and uh, building your brand and, you know, me building mine, us building ours, things of that nature, even on a small scale of support, it, it changes everything. If we could get, like, a dedicated few, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's like that Seth Golden, right? Seth Golden, I'm, I know he he don't he he's not the one who came up with it, but uh -huh. he's the one that's sticking my mind with it because I heard him say it a couple times. Um, but when he say, you know, a thousand true fans, that's all you need. So yeah. when you say you don't need everybody, you just need a few. You just need that few people who are willing to buy in to your idea, and that will change your lifestyle change everybody else's lifestyle around and i pick up on like what you said about um em employees and, and stuff yeah. like that where now other people are getting jobs off of because of what you just did for and if you want to go about it you can get certain people from those different type of communities and i.e bringing back the middle class or even 
higher, whichever way you can go with it, type thing. It's um, I, I was looking at a uh, a thing about money recently, and I had seen this clip before, mm -hmm. like years ago, but you know, I didn't, I wasn't mature enough to accept the clip the way that I see it now. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it was a guy. He said, uh, if I have a pillow factory, mm -hmm. right, and I sell pillows for two dollars, and I make ten million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I am used to living a ten million dollar a year lifestyle, mm -hmm. ten million dollars a year paying for my employees, making sure my expenses are paid, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So you, as a working class Joe making a decent amount, you can afford to get two dollar pillows for the whole family. Um, so you contribute. There's a whole bunch of working class Joes that's contributing. So what happens when we cut the um, workforce out? These people that's on the bottom, a lot of them get laid off. You that continue to stay there, you're going to work two, three times the amount for less money. Mm -hmm. You don't have the money to keep buying $2 pillows for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're getting a new pillow every five, ten years or something. Yeah. Or, you know, your wife has back issues, so you get her pillows, but you and the kids don't upgrade your pillows. Mm -hmm. um, however many it is, the company, the pillow company, is used to you buying $2 pillows for the whole family mm -hmm. every year. Because your pockets are messed up, you're not buying it, we're losing that. So what the company has to do is they have to raise the price of the pillows mm -hmm. so they can sell fewer but make the same amount of money mm -hmm. just so they can, they can sustain, just to keep gotcha. the employees and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then eventually... Um, as more people drop off of it, middle class is getting harder for them. They drop off. And now all of a sudden, you just get the people that have money to burn that can afford your pillows. And what was once a $2 pillow is now a $20 pillow just so they could make up the loss they got from all the average Joes that don't have the money to keep on mm -hmm. getting new pillows. So it's that small analogy. Like when I seen it, I was like, that makes sense. It makes perfect sense to me to just say, if I don't have money to spend, I'm not coming to your store. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, it doesn't matter. I'll triple the price of this mm -hmm. and have somebody else buy it. And that's how I'll make, I'll end up even. Mm -hmm. And that's why you look at like inflation. I think that's why inflation exists. Mm. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean that's good. Um, that I, that actually made me think um, <clears throat> of the the show that you that you about to come out with actually with the think it's not illegal. Mm -hmm. That's something that I feel like I'm sure we haven't recorded anything like that yet, but I'm yeah. sure that could be even something that'd be good for that. Um, when it comes to think though, think yeah. it's not illegal. That's I mean if you want to explain some of that. Yeah. You know, so. Think is not illegal yet is a show that I'm uh, coming out with, um, and it's really about uh, I look at like America, and America teaches you what to think, but they don't really teach you how to think. Mm -hmm. You go in and most people are saying, you know, I say it was two plus two. You jump out and you say four, not because you're doing the math, but because. You memorized, memorized it. it. Yeah. Um, so when you do that, then you can create like a whole slew of zombies that's just regurgitating information and never really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of ran with um, let's think while we have control of what's going on before they start censoring our thoughts mm -hmm. and telling us that we can't say what we need to say because one of the most lethal weapons that anybody has is their mind. You know what I mean? We're sitting in somebody's idea, mm -hmm. sitting on somebody's idea, recording on somebody's idea. Mm -hmm. um, so we already know how powerful thought is. And my whole idea is just kind of spinning off of what was just thrown in front of you and telling you to think about it, how to think about it. And this is what I think, but you don't even have to take what I think. Mm -hmm. I just want to open up some pieces that you may have unknowingly, you know, Ignore yeah. it or not even yeah. thought about. So that's why it's all about that. Just opening up, unpacking something to help you. So just like unpacking as in in the way of um, you're giving 
are you giving like your perspective on this or is it or I should say, are you giving your perspective on this or are you giving here are the facts about this and this is the way you should think? Like, is it a this is the way you should think type thing or let's just here's a thinking exercise and I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong or I'm right and you should listen to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just trying to figure out what this how this show um what you're trying to relay with this okay um is it yeah. a perspective it's, or, it's uh, i mean if my question came about no her. it did okay. it, it's throwing out the facts mm-hmm. i throw out the fact this part is a fact this is what they said as fact this is what it is mm-hmm. but there could be a whole nother side of it mm-hmm. a whole nother piece that we're not seeing um there was like a meme that goes around uh the internet it's like a cartoon um There is a small frame, a Mm -hmm. circle, and in the circle, you see a guy, it looks like he has a knife, and he's about to stab the guy that's like this. Mm -hmm. But when you widen the frame, you find out that the guy isn't holding a knife. He's kind of like just, you know, putting his hand up in defense, and the one that appears to be getting hit is like stepping down on the knee. You know, on the guy's knee. So he's breaking his leg off camera mm. and making it look like he's being attacked on camera. Mm. So my whole idea for this is just widening the lens. Okay. You know, they'll say that one plus one is two, mm-hmm. but they never explain that it could possibly be three. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's not talked about enough. It's just mm-hmm. here's your small frame. My goal is just to widen it. Maybe you don't agree with what I'm saying in my perspective because it's kind of hard to have these think pieces that may not be ideal Mm -hmm. without inserting a piece of you. Mm -hmm. So some of it will be my perspective, but it's also me being open enough to understand that maybe you don't look at it this way. Maybe my way isn't the way, but Mm -hmm. let's spark the brain and start talking about it and really thinking about what's happening and not just being so, you know, acceptable. Taking, yeah, taking take stuff all in of that stuff just regurgitated back out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. So it's, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's more of this is what I see. This is what we could see from this. And right. from that, if you take it as a, as a thinking exercise, then it could be, oh, this is a great way to think instead of already always jumping to a conclusion right or staying so hard on what you think you believe on a on a subject right okay yeah because <clears throat> what you what you were saying earlier when you were saying about because we know how the mind how strong the mind is mm-hmm. um how creative the mind is when you're just regurgitating things you're not using really from my, from what I see, you're not really using that creative aspect. No. You're just using the memory portion, and you're just spitting back out, just like a computer. Right. And those things, as we know today, computers are getting good enough to take those type of jobs. Right. But when it comes to being able to be talk from a creative space, when you actually work on that creative thing because like for me and you you know we have that when it comes to music we have the basically the gym to work out our creative mind right and then of course that i know for you too that's that's included with me is that we do a lot of self-development personal development also so we're still working out that mind but a lot of people don't 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 take that path to work it out but i know from working out that mind you do see how like you said, we're talking on something that somebody thought of, you know, right. recording off of something that somebody thought of. And these things is when I always think about that, that line about what you said, when I always think about that, I always think about how cool that is, that everything we see in this world, something somebody thought about. If, right. it's, if it's, as they say, man-made, somebody thought about it. And I think that's so cool because you're not understanding or when you come to the understanding of that this thing that I'm sitting in driving to go to work, somebody saw it in their mind first. It was created in their mind first, and we're just seeing the echo of what they saw first. Right. I love that, that stuff. That is, you know, it's it's wild. Um, it was years ago I seen an Eddie Griffin stand up, mm-hmm. right? 
Um, and he's actually what started me down the path of just kind of looking at things and like, mm-hmm. what would make you think of that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Start looking at it like that because um, he says a joke, you know, and he's like, uh, how high do you have to be to come up with, a, you know, a, a device like the telephone? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I want to talk to somebody who ain't even here. And I never thought about it like that just because telephones existed right you know it was like yeah you pick it up you dial a number somebody on the other end answers and it's like right. you know we're talking and it never dawns on you how far apart we are mm-hmm. you know what i mean <laughs> you know like it never dawns on you and it's like somebody you know um alexander Graham bell or if you believe there's alternative facts yeah. but somebody was sitting there and they said hey i want to talk to somebody who ain't here right and that had to like this guy's crazy. Like think, we gotta get him out of here. I think it was. Um, I might be wrong. <clears throat> Somebody, I'm sure people, the smart people will fact check me on it. But I think it was Mercury. I think his name was Mercury. Okay, that sounds about I think, right. But I think it was him. If it's not, then it's not. But I'm gonna just say for the sake of this, I think it was him where he he basically said, you know, we we should be able to talk to somebody from miles away and hear what they gotta say all right. through these waves in the in the sky. And he was actually put in the mental home. <laughs> he said, get his crazy ass out of here. He said, we got to sit him down. <laughs> He's saying some crazy stuff. Like, So, yeah, that foresight or that, that mind's eye and creativity is say, okay, these things are, are true about the laws of physics, the laws that we know of, mm-hmm. that we are aware of. And if this is true, if this is true, then here's the connection that nobody's making. What if we made this connection that right there is already like far sh- outstretched. But mm-hmm. then when you try to relay that to people, especially when it's something very new like that, yeah, yeah, you are going to be look- looked at as crazy. You're going to be looked at like, what the, bro, what are you talking about? This we have never done that out of the what two um what ten thousand not ten thousand like a thousand years of human being well right. even, even, maybe even ten thousand right you know how how long human beings have been around we've never done that before and you're going to talk about now you mm-hmm. i went to school with you <laughs> right <laughs> if i couldn't do this you can't you can't do this Clearly. what are you talking about but i think that um that's exactly why like a show like think is not legal yet is needed mm-hmm. because um not because of the sake of the show, because it's me, because that's part of it. But <laughs> also because I think that it's become scary to actually think on your own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We, we're like a hive species where it's just kind of like, what they say? Okay. All right. Sky is blue. That's what we're going with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just regurgitate this information. Mm-hmm. And no one ever thinks, like, maybe I should fact check this. Right. And, you know, what's funny about that is they say scientifically the sky isn't blue. Mm-hmm. It is white, and the reflection of the water is what makes it appear blue. Wow. You know what I mean? And that sounds crazy. It does. Like- <laughs> but that's actually an explanation where no one has ever explained right. the blue sky to me. Right. It was just like, grass is green, sky is blue. Why? Because it is. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And if... I would have continued down the wise because I was the kid that do that all the time. Why, why? If I would have been like, but why is it blue? And then they'd have been like, you know what? He just in here causing trouble. Mm-hmm. Let's call his mother and make something happen because <laughs> it's not accepted by the masses to mm-hmm. just be that inquisitive or to look at something that doesn't exist and say, why not? Mm-hmm. You know, and that that's why you'll you'll find like a lot of creators are like loners. And then they can only link up with people that's looking at an empty space and saying, how do we feel it? Mm -hmm. They can only link with people that think on that wavelength because the people that's the hive, the masses, are like, they said left. We're going left. Mm -hmm. And the creator's like, but why? (laughs) Right. (laughs) And nobody asks. Nobody even thinks to ask. So I think that the scary part is being on the ledge to, one, admit your ignorance to say, Hey, I'm sorry. Y'all never explained this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You Mm -hmm. told me to do it, but you never explained what this was. And then once they do it, to question it and then go into, all right, 
I don't think it's that. Mm -hmm. I think it's this, and we can have a healthy debate, or we end up changing the way everything is looked at. Like, I don't even know if um, we still have nine planets in the solar system. No, uh, it's in, eight in, in, Yeah, it's like eight. It was like a dwarf, and then it was like a moon, and then right. it, it was like wasn't, a dwarf I don't planet, know. and then they said it's not big enough to be a planet, and then, oh, the, the certain things that's going on with the um, the core of it makes it not a planet. Like Yeah, I, it but that fact, it was a fact. We had nine planets. Fact. For a long time. That was a fact. It was a fact. There was nothing to argue. That is what they said. And you know why I said it was nine planets? Because they told me it was nine planets. Right. I don't know. I don't you, know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that was a fact that I was out here spitting that, you know, we were passing down to our kids to somebody said, you know what? I don't think that's a planet. It's not a planet. No. And I'm pretty sure he got caught like all kinds of crazy right. like... Okay, obviously this guy, he missed school forever. <laughs> this scientist <laughs> here. <laughs> missed everything ever. And then somehow convinced them that, nope, not a planet. Or a dwarf. Or a right. moon. Or the core. Whatever. Or like, whatever. It's just a big asteroid. Yeah. Whatever they call it now, you know? Yeah. Like, like yeah, that's correct. Because that was, that was in textbooks. Like, yep. I wonder if it's still in textbooks. Because you know how They don't update schools the, the yeah. text. Yeah, that would be so great be, if it is. <laughs> You said, wait a minute. Y'all said we had eight right. planets. It says nine. It says nine. <laughs> it's a picture. What's this? What's this one? Right. <laughs> like Pluto. What? <laughs> you know, they probably see that and like, think of like Mickey's dog. Mm -hmm. That's what I used and to And don't think. even like really like. There, there's going to be a whole generation like of kids that don't really know of Pluto outside of the dog. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's crazy. Like. I mean, for us, I remember that planet. Right. <laughs> and you telling me right. it's not got my head like, you know. Like, it was a blue, cold, icy cold planet. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, I knew it was, it was a planet. A thing. That was a thing. Y'all had it up on maps, showing us, <laughs> showing us the whole exactly rotation. Exactly where it is. <laughs> yeah, what it does and how it. Like, hey, now you're telling me. Oh, no, don't don't worry about that. That's yeah, more that part, or less that's part just, of the asteroid belt. Right. I'm like, what? Hey, wait a minute. Why was we counting this? Right. That's like, you know what I mean? And you see the public outcry of that, too. Like, the public was just like, what? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, like, they was ready to fight scientists on this. Like, no. Yeah, like, <laughs> this is a planet. What do you mean? Like, because, of course, like you said, we just. The hive mind. Like, we learned what did that. you say? Let's do this. <laughs> Why are you doing that? I, I don't know. This is how we do it. Yeah. I, I tell my, um. So my kids all the time, uh, whenever they do anything, mm -hmm. good or bad or whatever, they come to me like they want like a reply. And I always say, why did you do it? And if they can't answer why, like they've gotten good at answering why. But <laughs> um, usually they go and they shrug the shoulders. And, mm -hmm. I say, if you don't know, you shouldn't be doing it. That goes for everything. <laughs> I don't want to ever just see you doing something. And I'm, what you doing? Oh, I'm doing this. Why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, we're not going. We're not flying like that. Mm -hmm. But um, that's just me encouraging them to think, and even, you know, not in a disrespectful way, but it's okay to question authority. Right. If I say something to you that you don't agree with, I'll open the floor and allow you to say your piece. Mm -hmm. And if what you say makes sense, then we negotiate and we can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, there's authoritative things where it's just. I said so, and this is what's going. I mean, just because when you're a kid, you think you know everything, mm -hmm. and then when you become an adult, you're like, yo, if I followed anything I did as a kid, I'd probably be dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> I probably would have died like a right. month or two later. Right. But um, outside of that, I kind of like, I encourage that question. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, ask. Don't ever be afraid to like look ignorant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because the actual definition of ignorance is not knowing. Right. But if you choose to not know, then that, that's another word. Right. Because <laughs> we're all ignorant in a lot of different right. spots. And as, right. and, and as the, what the saying goes, um, the wiser a man get, the more he knows he knows nothing yep. type thing. And that shows like we are fully ignorant on a lot of stuff. But of course, the connotation of that word is all bad and everything. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. You know, so when you question things, you get to piece things together mm -hmm. that wasn't pieced together before or just never executed on before. And then from that, we just keep on standing on the backs of people before us where we just continue on piecing things together.
Yep. I mean, I remember even when, and I and I and I like um I, I remember when um the iPhone first came out, mm -hmm. and I was with I had the Razor phone, I had the uh -huh. Razor for the longest time, <laughs> like. I was getting upset at the point where all my friends started to get uh uh what's that joint with with the phone sidekicks. Okay, sidekicks. Yeah. All my yeah, friends yeah, started yeah, yeah. to get sidekicks and I'm just like, you know what? When I saw that Apple was dropping a phone and and I saw the phone like the first mass um for the for the public touchscreen phone, I'm like, I'm getting it. I don't care. Right. So I set aside that that crazy Crazy in 2007, 500 dollars, just crazy. Yeah, that was nuts for a phone. I set that aside. I build up on that, and I'm like, I'm getting that phone. And then I got the phone, and people was joking, and even all in the media, everybody was saying it don't have a keyboard. Nobody want to tap on the screen all day. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna pay for a 500 dollar phone? That's crazy. <laughs> and now we look. Oh, oh, and especially if you remember the um first iPhone um they were saying it's just too big it's, oh, yeah, it's just yeah, huge yeah. but yeah, now we I got nothing but touchscreen phones because yep. everybody wanted touchscreen now we have um phones that are $1200 yeah easy <laughs> and now we have phones that are way bigger than that first iPhone. The first iPhone now looks like it's so small and, yeah. and clunky looking. But they were saying that that phone is just huge. Nobody want to hold that huge phone up. So people, like you said, the hive mentality, just because we're going with what always been, people mm. don't see that the new thing, the new innovation, the new create, somebody who comes from their creative mind and say, this is what we can do. Right. Nobody sees how that's going to impact the world until it impacts it. And then everybody looks back and be like, yeah, this was the thing that did it. But you was the one that was talking bad about it. Yeah. During I, the time. The the <laughs> coolest thing about this, though, you know, because, well, if you look at the patterns, you'll say, yo, maybe I shouldn't be so judgmental. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should, you know, open up more and just open up to the idea. Mm hmm. But because I mean, you would think that because your norms weren't normal, mm -hmm. you know, and just knowing that even like, you know, people our age, I have like um, conversations with them, you know, have conversations with people that's like 30 and up, mm -hmm. you know, even like my mother, you know, age and things of that nature. They have a hard time remembering uh, like years of me without like the cell phone without the luxury mm -hmm. of being able to call me and where are you at and things of that nature mm -hmm. of course my mother more uh closely to the situation she can remember mm -hmm. needing to you know page me mm -hmm. hit me on my beeper i never got a pager damn Never got a, I, that was another man, thing. Man, I, I thought I was the about. coolest thing ever, See? man. That was another thing I was upset about. That's why when the iPhone dropped, I was the like, one. Oh, this is me. This is me. <laughs> this I did is my not time. I, I stood in that line and I did not care. I'm not even a person to stand in line. I'm sorry for cutting you off on your <laughs> no, story. No, 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 this is good. But I'm not even a person to stand in line. Like I don't do that. Like I see people standing in line for shoes, I'm like, that's dumb. I see people <laughs> standing in line for, for, for a game, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? It's a game. Right, it's Chill a game, out. right. But when that phone was coming out, I was the third person person in line i went me and my boy i got him to stay up with me we stayed up all night 3 a.m i drive over to at&t store and sit right out there in front of the at&t store and right when i saw i saw one person in line i'm like we straight then i saw somebody else get in line and i said oh hell no i'm getting in line it's me now so right. i get in line and i wait for that phone <laughs> <laughs> because I was tired of everybody else having their flip phones, the nice sidekicks, the the pagers. Like my even my nephew had a pager. You like oh, where the, was mine? The see through green. Oh was, man! And I'm like, yo, this is so dope. Where's mine? And of course, people are like, oh, that's that's for drug dealers. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I need a pager, mom. You don't understand. I need a pager. So yeah, at that important. point, I was like, I got my own money. I'm getting me a phone. So I say that to say that's why it was so strong for me. Make to this happen, right? <laughs> to stay this is in my line. pager. This, this is, is my sidekick. <laughs> right. This is me. Yeah. Right now. I'm going to be the cool kid on the block because I've been so deprived this whole time. 
by having right. a cool razor. It was a cool razor when it first dropped, but having it for years. At that and point, it was else, just like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm behind the times. So. And then, then with the PDAs, with the with the little yeah, stylus yeah, and all, I'm seeing people joints. pressing on. St- I'm like, yo, come on, Say, yo. I gotta get in on this game, man. What I gotta do? Hit the number like three times. So. Right. <laughs> Right. Let me see. I got to put in C. All right, that's two, two, two. Yeah, right. you like, yeah. <laughs> My bad for going on a tangent. No, but no, yeah, no. So your mother remembers the times when she oh, had yeah. to page you. So my mother remember, <laughs> like, you know, all right, I need him to call me. She paged me. I stopped at somebody's house, mm-hmm. call her back. Um, and then the times of me being outside where she couldn't do that, mm-hmm. it's kind of, she doesn't remember that too much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, where I go off the block and things of that nature. Just like, you know, like you said, the iPhone dropped 07. I remember exactly where I was at when it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, the iPhone drops, and that was not long ago. Mm-mm. You know, in, in the scheme, grand scheme of things, as far as, like, our lifeline, you look, it wasn't that long ago. But it's kind of hard to even, like, think we were using well, T9, you know, like me, I, yeah. I I was like, don't text me. I won't respond mm-hmm. because I, I didn't have the patience to <laughs> stand there and just keep on punching. And then it's even worse when you, like, miss your letter and you got to circle oh, it all the way back boy. around. And I'm like, you know, all I got on this, is the screen is C. I didn't say anything else. <laughs> and it's, I've been here for five minutes. <laughs> right. It's kind of hard to, like, even believe, even though I remember not having a cell phone at all. And then when we got the cell phones, the little clunky Nokia and then yeah, yeah, going on joint. to and I remember joint. when um Next Hells was like where it was at. Yeah. Like oh the church God. people. That wasn't See? that long ago. See, you about to make me upset again. I'm telling you. You ain't had no bloop bloop. No, no bloop bloop. Oh everybody man. bloop blooping all over the place and I'm just like, yo. Let me hold your phone real quick. Yeah, bloop right. somebody. Yo, bloop bum <laughs> such and such for me, y'all. <laughs> <Yeah, that's- laughs> Oh man! I was deprived on a cell phone game. I had my Nokia around that time, right? For the blue going on, and I'm over here playing Snake on a Nokia. Nokia, playing Snake, yeah. <laughs> snake was very underrated, by it the way. That was. <laughs> <laughs> was a great game, but yeah, the, it, yeah, yeah. We we were in a time where, um, and this is this is really wild when you think back on it. A cell phone is. An upgraded form of a walkie-talkie. Mm-hmm. It's better than a walkie-talkie. Mm-hmm. And we as consumers went crazy over having a phone that could be a walkie-talkie. Mm-hmm. What's next? Have walkie-talkies that could be cans? You know what I mean? Like it, It's <laughs> weird how that's framed, but we went crazy over that, all wanting the... Bleep, bleep. Press the side button. Yeah, all, all wanting that. Yo, um, where you at? And I, I honestly think that it really just depends on branding. Mm-hmm. If I would have just said, like, yo, you got a cell phone that can call people, guess what we got? A walkie-talkie that you can hold the button and talk to them and let go to listen. While you have a cell phone that you can just flowingly go in just conversation with. Back and forth. You don't have to wait Dang. or go into the whole thing of over. You right. Know, of course, we never did that. But, but yeah, just even having to, they sold us a walkie-talkie in a time of cell phones. <laughs> Not didn't mean to go off when it's like this. No, but you know, but even with that, even after I got the iPhone, that, and once they actually talked Steve Jobs into allowing apps to happen. Because of course he was against it. That was that's a whole notorious thing about that that he did not believe in apps. Oh man, um, don't know if you knew that or not. If I've read it, I didn't retain it. Yeah, he he wanted. Of course, as we know, Apple is like a ecosystem in itself, mm-hmm. self contained, and he wanted to keep it that way. He was not like the first iPhone had no app store because he believed that that wasn't the way that people was going to go. People was just going to go to the internet if they wanted anything. Right. So he said no apps. They try to say, oh, we should be able to have. Maybe have other people create applications and he was like no we make our own applications that's it but somebody talked him into it and then finally um we started getting apps and he's seen how far that just blew up how fast it blew up so i say that tangent to come back over to what you were saying about the walkie talkie and the whole marketing of it it got to the point where when we was able to have apps i would search for the app to walkie talkie people (laughs) and they had apps for walkie talkie and i was like this is so cool 
Like, how's, how crazy is that now that you have a <laughs> touchscreen phone that you can just talk to? That's you just still want to the walkie you wanna <laughs> hold on the screen and press the walkie talkie function. That is wild, <laughs> man. And, and, and while you was talking about that, um, it made me think of something. Um, and this is like me grabbing like a micro piece of what you said and then mm-hmm. it expounded my mind. Um, when you mentioned uh, Steve Jobs was like, no, we don't need to bring out outside people. Will McDaps, you know what I mean? It made me think of uh, Arsenio Hall um, explaining um, how Eddie Murphy came to him with uh, coming to America. Mm-hmm. He said Eddie Murphy was like, yeah, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. He was like, and I'm going to play all them people, right? <laughs> and Arsenio Hall said he looked and said... Um, that's selfish. You got all of these black actors out here <laughs> that need jobs, so forth and so on. Da 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 da. da. He said Eddie Murphy was like, "And you gonna play all the other people?" He was like, "Oh man, forget them people, man." <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and it just made me think, like, you know, Steve Jobs is pulling the Eddie Murphy, like, you know what? I'm gonna just play everybody. <laughs> just like, we gonna right. just do all the apps. Like, right. you know, I'm not worried about what you doing, what you doing. Mm-hmm. We'll just do the everything, and. <laughs> It's funny because even going off on that tangent, not realizing, it goes back into how important branding is mm. because Apple is a brand that just can release something. And because it's Apple, it's yep. going to move. They, they got good product, mm-hmm. you know, but they've made this like so huge that people are buying things, I believe, because it's Apple. Like, you know about the Apple jump rope? I actually don't know about the Apple jump rope, so it's going to make it bad about what I say next with it. But go ahead. Okay. Because yeah. I was going, I was going to say, I was going to say, like I'm one of those people who, just because it's Apple, you're going to check it out. Right. Like I, they, they once I switched over to Apple with the um, laptops, um, for my music, that I, it, of course, the learning curve of yeah. learning how where everything is. The X is not over here on the That's on the right anymore. That's why I still struggle. I ain't gonna lie. It's like being left handed. Like, <laughs> right, uh, like small things like that. But once you adapt, I was like, okay, I like this. And then the iPhone, mm-hmm. as we just talked about, everything I went through to get that phone. Yeah, this is for me. <laughs> this for me. After that came, and they was basically the big boys on the block, the first one to take a chance to actually hit it out the park like that. I'm like, I'm done. That's Apple. So they got me like that. So okay. they make solid products, and now for the most part, everything they come out with, I'm like, I can bank on it. I, I'm sure. I'm sure I can. And that goes back to marketing too, which we can talk about. And this is the. It's exactly it's right on brand <laughs> where I'm going. Um, so the Apple jump rope. Um, when I heard about it, I thought this was some like you know somebody made this up and created it in their basement and they <laughs> selling it on eBay, right? Um, I was like because I believe I would have heard of an Apple jump rope because mm-hmm. it sounds outrageous to me. Mm-hmm. You know why do you have a jump rope? Like why do you know why is jump rope on Wi Fi? I couldn't like wrap my mind around it. <laughs> um, so uh, my friend's brother, he. Uh, he was the one looking for it. And mm-hmm. I just thought, you know, he's just high or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know where he came with this product. Right. But um, so I go into the store with him. Now, you know, you fight me with this all the time because I'm not an Apple man. Mm-hmm. Don't judge. Um, no, some people out there are like, that's right. Hold your ground. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't go into the Apple stores often. Um, uh, but I'm going in there with, uh, with Tillman and his brother. And his brother's like... He go in there and ask for the jump rope, which I'm ready for the, the guy to tell him, <laughs> dude, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, yeah, we don't have any more in stock. And I said, time out. <laughs> That's really a thing. <laughs> I only came inside because I wanted to hear y'all tell him <laughs> that there was no such thing. <laughs> but what it does is it's supposed to like be able to like uh, check like your your vitals. Oh, okay. Um, and as you're jumping and the rope goes over, it has like the little flasher to keep up, the, you know, the number of your jumps. Mm-hmm. And it can go, of course, right, sync right to your phone and update your activity and all that other stuff, even if you don't have your phone in your pocket yeah. while you're jump roping. Um, so the idea, I get it. But that is something that if I'm Apple, I would never in a million years think like, yo, jump rope. Right. You know what I mean? Somebody just did that. Now, I don't know if that was a failure or a win, but I know it was a thing and it existed. And after, like, they convinced me that, 
maybe a jump rope attached to my phone kind of makes sense. Yeah. You know, where when I first heard it, it was just like so far and beyond, you know what I mean, but the Apple brand and then the way that they carry, you know, they carry everything in a way that I don't know if I'm even allowed to call him an employee, um, you know, broke down like what it would do and what you could use it for. Right. It's It was only like months later that I was like, yo, he just made an electronic jump rope make sense mm -hmm. where it made no sense when I walked in at all. Right. So, you know, I mean, their brand is just on See, point with that. And that, that's what I was saying about with marketing. Like, because one, a lot of people don't believe that they're influenced by marketing. They say, well, I like I like those shoes because I like them. Like, a lot of the times, no, it's not because you just like them. It's because it was presented to you a certain way, music a certain way, the lighting, the angles was given a certain way, the description of it a certain way yeah. that talked to your brain talk to your subconscious in a way where it just went off in your your reward center your brain and all that and just went off and being like i need that the the kid in you is like i need that i want that so i say that to say i know one i know the good things about apple products uh -huh. but then two i know when it comes to marketing apple got me yeah. like i know i'm being influenced by their their advertisement but you're okay with it. I'm okay it's with like, it. Yo, well, right. Like I'm not going to lie me. to myself. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. get upset and be because yeah. that's that one. That's their job. That's any any brand's job to give some type of advertisement. Because without advertisement and marketing, we don't know you exist. Right. So I'm fine with that, and I'm I'm just happy that I know. Right. Right. And through me knowing, that's why I know now. Because like you were saying about um, you don't know if they what if it was a hit or miss. Yeah. One thing that I learned, um, especially with Apple, I don't know if I like this may be a secret that they don't want people to know, you know. But all these years of me being such a advocate for them, I know when they have something that's not really a hit. Right. When it first come out, it looks great. It sounds great. Everything is clicking like they usually click. But then as a couple months go by, if they if you don't continuously see commercials or advertisements on it, then that means okay, it's not a home run for them. Right. They're not fully they probably not either not happy about it or they're not happy about the numbers that's coming back. Right. Um I, I look at um when they came out the with the Mac Pro and it was a circular just a whole circular unit instead of that that big old um, rectangle. That yeah rectangle they had a circle black sleek it was dope right I liked it but then they stopped talking about it so that was one that was one thing and then the newest one is um, Apple HomePods okay uh, that pulls have been like the rival to Alexa and Alexa and Echo yeah. Dot and stuff yeah but seeing that from what I know of it seeing that it really don't it don't have a deep infrastructure like Alexa does when you just exit almost damn near anything. Right. And then you can also tell it to buy you to toothpaste. Yep. It's seeing that it can't do that. It's not like a home run. The home run was the sound quality of it. The home run was the fact that you put it anywhere in your room and it adjusts the sound and how it projects the sound. So it sounds good within that room. Oh, that's that's wow. the home run, but okay. seeing that how consumers are moving, which is they want to sit back and say, Alexa, do this, Alexa, do that. Mm -hmm. You can't say, hey, Siri, do this, Siri, do that. It's not going to listen to you, and, and or it's going to be like, well, I looked it up on the internet for you. If you right, wanna. so it, it wasn't going to like, you know, it, it's not as intertwined. It's not. So that's because probably, of that, the home part is not a home run, so therefore you don't see damn near any commercials now about the home part when it first happened i was like oh that's yeah. dope and of course like i said the advertisement yeah. working on me and i'm like i might need to get that but then i start paying attention and i'm like i hate to say it but alexa is better right now so i'm gonna hold out and then i held out and then the commercials died down and i'm like okay yep yeah <laughs> it's uh you know um the funny thing is i i have alexa um and it's still weird to me Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, like, it, it gets normalized to me, and I kind of snap out, and I look at it like, this is weird. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, there's just too much information floating around. Because of that, I won't have, like, no deep, deep discussions in the living room. They listen in my mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, yo, how do you pick this stuff up so quickly? You know what I mean? Um, but uh, off of that, 
going into like being sold and knowing you're sold because I think as I've gotten better as a salesman and understanding sales and how, you know, uh, even down to like, you know, companies fighting over shelf space mm-hmm. for cereal. It need to be at the kids eye level. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, all of those things and understanding how they sell you on that, how they rope you in. Um, it's kind of hard for someone to sell me unknowingly now. Mm-hmm. You know, when somebody get me, I'll stop. I, I will even like tell them like, ah, you got me. <laughs> no, you sold me on that. Mm-hmm. No, no, I know you were selling me, but it was right on par, and I'm going to buy. Right. You know what I mean? You you don't have to explain. No, I wasn't trying to sell you, brother. I was just trying to. No, you no, were. No, 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 no. And it worked. And I'm not offended because you played to all of my sweet spots, and right. this is what I'm getting now. Don't don't defend it. Just take my money. Just <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> just take it. Just take this and make this happen. You you getting weird now? But I gotta uh, you know. <laughs> Like, now, I'm fully aware of it. Mm-hmm. And it makes me, like, sometimes I look at, like, my kids or other people, whoever, and I'm like, they don't know that they're getting sold. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, like, uh, my oldest daughter, her favorite song is always, like, the top song mm-hmm. of whatever. Mm-hmm. And she swears to me that this is just the type of music she likes. Mm-hmm. But what ends up happening is I start pointing it out to her and she's like conscious of it now. But I start pointing out to her that um, she'll be singing a song and I'll say, who sings that? She doesn't know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do you know the song? Mm-hmm. I heard it here. There was a TikTok video. My friends were dancing to it. Blah, 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 blah. She probably heard it as the cars were passing. Heard it when she got in the car with her grandmother and the <laughs> radio's on. It Hear it. And her friend was playing it in the background. And subconsciously, they threw this in your head. And without you knowing the name of the song, what the song is about, who sings the song, you can't tell me anything about it. Mm-hmm. You can't even look the song up yourself. <laughs> but you know all the words. Mm-hmm. It was implanted. And you were sold and had no idea that no you got idea. that somebody was selling you. Right. And they was pulling you in like, yeah, I got it. Right. I got it. You're like, nope, I'm freely going where I want while you're walking straight towards right, them. Right, right. You know, and I was like, um, now I pointed out to her. She'd be like, how do they do that? And I'm just like, it, it's crazy how the mind works, how we will normalize something. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes a part of us without us even like questioning it. Right. And you know, down to the songs and branding and how we quickly just look at it and say, that makes sense. That makes and sense. I want it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why it makes sense. It just does. And, and on that about saying, I don't know why, that's also where it comes to you get something placed in front of you enough times, your subconscious will send a message and then you act on it. Mm-hmm. But seeing that, at least for our conscious brain, our intellect... Yeah. Our intellectual side, our brain don't like to, our conscious brain don't like to not know why it's doing what it's doing. We don't like to know, as people, we don't like to know, not know why we're doing what we're doing. Right. So if you ask, like you said, you ask, you know, people, oh, why do you like that? They might not know fully why, but they're going to be like, oh, it's because of this. It's because of that. They're going to search for a reason yep. that makes sense for them. But in actuality, it's because of, oh, you heard it like 15 times or you heard somebody while you was getting on a plane, you heard somebody um, headphones blasting it and it sounded cool because you was on first time on a plane. So now that just sticks in your mind. Uh, Something yeah. that small. Yeah. And, um, and and you don't even recognize that that's the actual influence, but you have to come up with something to say and be like, no, this is the reason why. And then because of that, you don't like to contradict yourself. Right. So, so you, now you're going to defend it. Yeah. Be like, no, this is the reason why I like it because this is my type of music. Yeah. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your favorite artist that you don't know the name of. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that you you just made me think of. Um, it's a movie, uh, Will Smith movie called Focus. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he he does this thing. Um, spoiler alert! If you haven't seen this, I don't know why it's like a About good years. movie, and that was years ago. So, but um, if it's a spoiler, it's, it's bad on you. It's bad on you. <laughs> but still, it's a dope movie. So look at it anyway. <laughs> um, where he goes into like uh, playing this dude, and he does the gambling thing. Like, look, pick anybody on the field, mm-hmm. and I'll guess mm-hmm. the number. Yeah. And if you know, you look on the field and you're like, dude, there's like hundreds of like people with numbers on. Mm-hmm. You know, players on each side, you got fans in the stands, you got referees, you know. I'm just gonna leave you to look into the stadium and pick somebody. Mm-hmm. You know. Um and then he picked it and he gets it correct and the girl was like, Oh my god, like how'd you do that? Mm-hmm. And then he was like, I've been throwing this in his face all day. All day. He just been tossing out the number five, the number you know five five, mm-hmm. you know even down to like uh, it was the song where like the number five uh, in that language is woo, yeah woo woo, and then the woo-woo. song yeah yeah you know he had that song playing over and over and he just kept throwing fifty five in his face over and it wasn't like hey look over here number fifty five remember mm-hmm. it was just like. Over here, over there, over there. Out of his, outside of his conscious. Outside awareness. of his conscious, and he takes it, and he's internalizing. He doesn't even know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then he gets there, and he picks what looks familiar. Mm-hmm. He doesn't think it looks familiar. It. He believes he just came up with that. Yeah, subconscious he, brain yelled out, Ooh, 55. Yeah. There like, it is. There it is. Let's do this. <laughs> and it, it's really nuts when you think about that, like, Mm -hmm. Um, how influenced we are, how, you know, people can play to, you know, pull on those certain strings Mm -hmm. and have you like, you know what? All right, where we going? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you said this way. All right, let's go. And and how wild it is that that happens. Um, It, I notice when I'm going to work Mm -hmm. and I like forget, you know, going to work. I'm just there. Yeah. You know, I'm just at work. And yeah. it's like, I don't remember the actual act of getting here. Getting there. You know, it's just wild how your brain is wired to fill in the blanks. Mm-hmm. You usually go this way when you're going to this place. Mm-hmm. And it just fills in the blanks and you're kind of like on autopilot. autopilot. So to know that that happens, you have to think that anything else is repetition mm-hmm. eventually can stick in and then you get sold and you don't even know. Like, right. That's just like when we hear songs and we be like, this song is trash. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you hear it and be like, yo, why are they playing this song? And then you hear it again. And then you hear it again. And you're like, all right, all right, whatever. I mean, it got a good bounce to it. So whatever. Yeah. And then then that next month, you're like, oh, this is my joint. Turn that up. And you're right. like, what the hell? Yo, I hated this joint. What did y'all do to me? <laughs> you know what I mean? What, what did you do to me? Like, you did something. <laughs> Yeah, so it's that repetition, that repetition, and it gets in there, and once it becomes familiar, it's like, oh, I like this. Like, no, you just know that it's familiar, so it's comfortable. You know what's uh, <laughs> funny? Um, I had heard uh, a Royce the Five Nine interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he was you know explaining how he got sober and explained like one of his like first big encounters. Mm-hmm. You know, was he had you know got in a car crash and. When he woke up to the police, and the police were, uh, they were saying they needed him to get out and do a sobriety test. They could see that he was drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, so he said, I remember singing the ABCs. Um, and as he says it, I was like, I always sing the ABCs, right? I was like, so if that was the part that made them realize, like, oh, he's drunk, I said, I'd be in trouble because I don't. Just speaking the ABCs is difficult for me. Mm-hmm. You know, always sing them. Um, he wasn't really in trouble for singing the ABCs. Just a side note off on that. Um, he said that he ended it with the next time, won't you sing with me? It's <laughs> <laughs> what probably took it over the top. But uh, past, past that, um, even now as an adult, mm-hmm. I remember my ABCs because of a repetitive song Mm -hmm. that I hear everywhere and it's so repetitive that it's dug deep in my mind in the moment that you come to me and say, hey, what's up with this? Mm -hmm. And give me this, you know, say your alphabet. It comes in the form of that song. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think that I think through the alphabet. Mm -hmm. I think that just 
you know, you ask for it, I give it, and that's the way it goes. Like, even in my mind, I'm not singing it out loud, but mm -hmm. I would sing it in my mind to get where I'm going. I think one of the um, best ways to do it is when I, uh, I mean, to compare it is when I have to put in the last four of my social. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the last four of my social. You gotta see the rest of it. I gotta see the rest of first. it, and it's too. It, it's a flow. Yeah. Right. You always get that duh, duh, for the first for the middle two numbers, right? Right. So <laughs> I had to condition myself on that. Mm -hmm. Um, and at risk of nerding out, uh, the reason that happens, you know, mm -hmm. brain wise, this is outside of me and everybody else, is because. They say that the brain can only um, make like seven decisions mm. a day or something like that. Mm. Um, you know, sidebar, which is why, like they say, like a lot of millionaires appear to wear the same thing. Mm -hmm. They don't want right. to waste that one of their Wasting. decisions on uh, yeah. finding an outfit. Um, but so you think about everything else you're doing during the day and what the psychologists call uh, chunking. Mm -hmm. is how you're able to add on new information. And to me, chunking really just takes information that's outside of your consciousness, mm -hmm. takes it, it puts it in your subconscious, links it onto something, and next time you're asked about it, you don't think about it. It's not a deep thought. It's really just you regurgitating something that's in your subconscious, like mm -hmm. me singing the ABCs or needing to... You know, you doing your um, social, mm -hmm. you got to go through these numbers to get to the last four. Yeah. And you probably know your social for I don't know how many years, but just spitting out those last four is difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> how, you know, you drive to work and don't remember driving to work. It's <clears throat> your brain's way of saying, all right, we're not going to work too hard. Mm -hmm. You remember this? Let's let's play Let's replay a clip of... Um, what he did yesterday at this time. Right. Went to work. You know what I mean? Let's replay a clip of him at six, you know, singing ABCs in class with his friend. <laughs> Let's replay a clip so therefore you don't have to waste one of those decisions and start from scratch every day. Mm -hmm. So it's like the subconscious is like really good for keeping you from like overstressing these things. Mm -hmm. But um, it becomes a tool that's used against you right. and, in the form of sale. Right. Hey, you like this. Right. You want to buy this. Come get this. And you're like, I don't even know why I need this, but, but uh, I do need yeah. this. <laughs> right. Like, I'm going to get it. Yeah. Like, I figure it out when I get it home and unwrap it. Then I figure out what I need it for. Right. You know? And then that, then also what the, did you say about the subconscious, it just goes right back around to this is why when you say about think, it's not illegal yet. Right. It goes right back to that. This is why it's a great way to practice thinking exercises and actually not just thinking of something like whatever pops in your mind but whatever pops in your mind and start turning it over and looking at it from different angles right. actually put your mind in use so you can make that muscle stronger so like you said and like i said we know we're being sold to but sometimes we want to be sold to and that's fine right right just acknowledging it start there with the think piece there you go so boom so that's 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 the program right there I think that's the program. I'm done, man. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> D-Brown got his son. Ty kills him. And there we go. Begotten experience. See y'all next time. Hey, podcast, I appreciate your ears. If you found any value in this begotten experience, pass it forward. Share it with a friend. And if not, thanks for stopping by. Until next time. <laughs>